Hello and welcome back. Today's video is an interesting one. It's about a specific architecture pattern called event driven architecture. It uses events to decouple that is separate an application's components. Event is nothing but change in state or an update within the application. This architecture mainly has four components. They are event produces. These are the ones that causes the change in state and produce the event. Next is event ingestion. It's like an event router that filters and pushes the event to the next component. Next comes the event stream, which is optional and recommended if you are processing huge number of events and would like to store the events so that the consumers can retrieve from them. And finally, we have event consumers. These are the ones that actually take action on the events, like some uh, workflow or updating the database. You can use various AWS services in the place of each of these components. And this type of architecture is used in many use cases because of its key benefits. Like it helps in loosely coupled applications as the dependencies between the components are less and changing one service will have less risk of impacting the others. Adding new feature to the application is much more easier. Also, we can scale individual components and it is resilient as it reduces single points of failures. This is a sample use case within AWS making use of event-driven architecture. So users upload an object to S3 bucket that publishes a message to SNS topic, which then filters the events and sends it to the respective queues. And finally, it's consumed by the Lambda functions to perform some action on it. Here, the event is adding a new object and the event producer is the S3 bucket because that's where the change occurred. Then the event ingestion is handled by SNS topic while the SQS queues acts as the event stream and the Lambda functions are the consumers. You can use various other AWS services in place of each of these components like AWS EventBridge or Amazon MQ. But for today, we are going to implement this use case in AWS console. So let's get started. Okay, so we are in the AWS console. First, let's start by creating the four underlying components. That is our S3 bucket, SNS topic, SQS queues, and Lambda. So first, let's start with the event producer, which is our S3 bucket. I'm going to give the bucket a name, which has to be globally unique. And then I'm going to go with pretty much the default values for all the other attributes. If you would like, you can change it based on your use case. I'm going to block all the public access, disable versioning, and the default encryption is always enabled, so I'm going to just leave it enabled. And the object lock is disabled. Let's create the bucket. It's a very simple first step. Once you have your event producer ready, which is our S3 bucket, let's move on to our second component, which is the SNS topic. So I'm going to switch to SNS topic and give the topic a name. I'm going to call this as my topic. And within SNS, you have two types, which is FIFO SNS and as well as the standard SNS topic. So in case of FIFO, the message delivery is always preserved. The order of the delivery is preserved and the messages are exactly delivered once. And the throughput is somewhat lesser when compared to standard uh, type. Whereas in case of standard, it is best effort delivery and the message is at least delivered once, whereas the throughput is higher. So based on your use case, you can choose one of it. I'm going with standard. And by default, encryption is disabled. If you want, you can enable it. And access policy determines who can access your SNS topic. By default, it only allows the topic owner to publish the message and also to subscribe. We are going to change this. Uh, because we want our S3 bucket as well as our SQS queues to access our SNS topic. So there is an option to specify a JSON policy. So we are going to do that. I have given the JSON policy in the Git repository. I'll leave the link of that in the description. 
So this is a policy that we are going to use. So it allows just two permissions. One is to uh, one is for our S3 bucket to publish the message, and the second one is for our SQS queues to subscribe to the SNS topic. So let's copy this, head back to the console and paste this. And here you can find few variables like the account ID, region, SNS topic, S3 bucket name, as well as the SQS queues. I've given them with between the angle brackets. So please replace them. And I have replaced everything. So once replaced, we can move on to the other attributes within the SNS topic. So data retention policy, I'm going to go with the default option of basic configuration mode. And delivery policy, there are default uh, value set. This will work for most of the use cases. If you want the number of retries to, uh, to increase or the delay of the message delivery to be increased or decrease, you can change it here. And logging, you can even log uh, the SNS topic message delivery. Okay, once we are okay with all the attributes, let's create the topic. All right, so we have our second component as well, which is the event ingestion. So once that is done, let's move on to our third component, which is our event stream, uh, which is our SQS queue. Here again, you have two options, standard and FIFO. Again, the delivery uh, mechanism changes in both the cases. We are going to go with the standard one uh, for our use case today. I'm going to call this as Q1 uh, because we are going to have multiple queues. I'm going to go with the default values here for the configuration. There is a separate video explaining each and every one of it. I'll leave a link of that in the description. Please check that out. And encryption is enabled by default, so let's leave it there. And similar to SNS access policy, you have you can specify access policy for SQS as well. So this just determines who can access your queue. So the policy is again available in the repository. So this allows again only two permissions. One is for the uh, Lambda function to receive the message and send the message. And the second one is for our SNS topic to send the message. Let's copy this and paste it here. And here again, there are a few variables. So replace them with the actual values. And also you have the read drive policy in order if you, if the message delivery fails, then you can set up a dead letter queue and then you can redirect the message to that queue. All right, so we have all the options set up. So with this, we have one of our queues ready. But in our use case, we are going to have multiple use case because we are going to redirect the messages to different queues based on the event type. So I'm going to create a second queue uh, with default pretty much the same uh, options. Just that the queue name is different here and I'm going to map this to a different Lambda function. All right, so with that, we have our second queue as well. Okay, moving on, we are going to create our final component, which is a Lambda function. So again, we are going to have two Lambda functions. If you look at our architecture, we had three queues and three Lambda functions. Just for simplicity of the demo, I'm going to create two queues and two Lambda functions. So I'm going to create the first function now. Uh, we are we're going to just call it as my Lambda one. Make sure that you're using this name in the SQS access policy. And for the execution role, uh, let's create a new role. So I'm going to choose that. So before that, let's create the role first. So I'm get, heading to the IAM console. And let's create a role. So create a new role. And this is going to uh, allow Lambda function and let's create a new policy. Let's go with the JSON option because uh, 
the JSON policy document is available in the repository. So get into the repository and choose the Lambda policy. Here, copy this. This allows the access to SQS queue and the CloudWatch logs. So it's very simple policy. It allows a receive message and delete, delete message from the SQS queue and the basic log group functions. So let's change the uh, variables with the actual values and name this policy. I'm just going to call this as my lambda policy one because we are going to need two of them as we are going to have two lambda functions. All right, so we have our policy. Let's go back and attach it to our role and give the role a name as well. I'm going to call this as my lambda role one and create the role. So once we have the role, let's go back to the Lambda console and attach it to our Lambda and create the function. All right, so we have our first function. I'm not going to do any processing within the Lambda itself. I'm just going to print the event and show you how the event looks like. Feel free to use your own use case here. You can code based on your use case. Deployed it, I'm just printing the event itself. All right, we are going to repeat the same process by creating a second Lambda function. I'm going to call it as my Lambda function uh, two, my Lambda two. And then I'm going to select Python 3.8 as a runtime environment. Again, we need a new role for this as well. So create a role and the use case is Lambda. And within permissions, we are going to need to create a new policy as well. So this time you can just copy the previous policies JSON document. That way it will be easier because the variables are already replaced there. So uh, copy this. The one thing that you have to be aware of is change the queue name. Uh, make sure that you uh, change the Lambda name as well as the queue name to Q2 and give the policy a name. Just calling this as my Lambda policy too. All right, once the policy is created, go back to the roles page and attach the policy and give the role a name as well. I'm calling this as my Lambda role too and create the role. All right, now let's uh, select the role that we just created and create the function. So we created two Lambda functions now and we are going to do the same thing. Print, just print the uh, data. That is print the event itself. So with this, we have all our four components ready to use. The last thing that is pending to be done is connect these four components. So first, let's start by connecting the S3 bucket to the SNS topic. So within the S3 bucket properties, you have this event notification. So we are going to create the new event notification and call this as new object notifier as an event name. You can name it anything, obviously. Uh, and then here, I'm going to just select the event type of object creation. You have various other events. So your event will get triggered when this particular action occurs. So in our case, in case you're uploading a new object or if you're creating something new, the event notifier will be triggered. And as the destination, I'm selecting our SNS topic, which is our event ingestion uh, component, which we're using in this use case. So once you select the SNS topic, save it. With this, we have our event notification created. You can create more than one event notification as well. All right, moving on, uh, we are going to establish a connection between SNS topic and SQS queue now. So for that, you have to subscribe to the topic. So within SNS, you have the subscribe option. I'm going to uh, choose SQS protocol here and select our first queue. And within this, you have the filter policy. 
which allows us to filter various events and forward only the specific events to the specific event uh, stream. So for this, I have given the filter policy in the GitHub repository as well. So it's a very simple policy. You can ma make use of the event body to filter the messages. So here I'm uh, filtering the messages based on the event name. So only the put related events will be forwarded to this particular queue. So records event name object created is set to put, then it will be redirected to this queue. Right, so we have subscribed our first queue. Now we are going to subscribe our second queue. Here again, I am choosing SQS as a protocol, but the Q2 as the option here. And within the subscription filter policy, again, we are going to select message body. And within that, instead of put, we are going to forward the copy uh, event here. All right, so now we have both our queues subscribed to the topic. And the final connection is from our queue to the Lambda function. So for that, let's get into our SQS queue uh, console. And here you have an option for Lambda triggers separately. So what we are going to do is configure the Lambda function. It's very simple and straightforward. For the first queue, we are going to select Lambda 1 and save it. And similarly, for the second queue, we are going to select the Lambda 2 function. Configure Lambda trigger and select the Lambda 2 function. So with this, all our components are connected. That is from S3 bucket. Once the event is generated, it will be forwarded to the SNS topic, then to the SQS queue, and then finally to our Lambda function. So with this, our entire setup is done. Let's just go to the Lambda function and see that our trigger is actually set. If you refresh this, you will see that the trigger is set to SQS. So all our four components are connected. Now all that is rest to do, left to do is to test our setup. So let's do that. The first uh, event which we are going to do is put object. So let's try uploading any, any file or anything that you have try uploading it. So once the upload is successful, you should be able to see the CloudWatch logs of the Lambda function that the event is actually printed. So this has to happen in Lambda function 1 because it will take the route of S3, SNS, Q1 and Lambda function 1. If you look at the CloudWatch logs of our first Lambda function, you should see the event printed. As you can see, there is an event and the record has a body uh, which has the actual S3 bucket name as well as the event uh, name. So this is the S3 bucket name and then that is the event name because we applied the filter on the event name which was object created put you can apply this filter on any other message uh, body attribute as well based on your use case. So for this, I have set it up on the uh, event name. And for generating the next event, uh, let's copy this because that is what we uh, set for the second queue. So select the object and we are going to copy this to the same bucket. So I'm choosing the same bucket as a destination, but I'm just going to add a new prefix to it. So S3 double slash and then the bucket name slash. I'm just going to add a random prefix to it. I'm just call, going to call this as new. So which will copy this object to the same bucket. All right. So this is copied. Now what will happen is once the event is generated from S3, it will go into the same SNS topic, but this time the SNS will filter it and push it to the second queue and it will be consumed by our second lambda. So looking into the second lambda's uh, logs, you can see the event has been generated and this will have the same S3 bucket, but the event name this time is copy. So this is the whole event driven architecture. Hope you found this useful and you can change it based on your use case. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. 
see you soon in the next video thank you